Given functions p of x equals 1 divided by the square root of x and m of x equals x squared minus 4, state the domain of each of the following functions using interval notation. And then we have three different functions that we have to figure out. Now the good thing about this is that we don't have to simplify these new functions. So we're just going to get the function and then state what the domain is. Okay, so for a, I'll put a over here. It looks like we are just dividing two functions. I'm taking the p of x function, which was stated up here, and I'm dividing it by the m of x function, which was this. So simple enough, I'm just going to rewrite it, p of x over m of x. What was the p of x function? Well, the p of x function was one over the square root of x, which is what was this. And all I gotta do is just divide that by the m of x function. And the m of x function was this one, x squared divided by, or x squared minus four. Okay, so now we just have to look at this function that we made and we just have to state the domain, simple enough. So what we need to know is when we're doing domains, and, and by the way, if you guys are having a little bit more trouble with domain and understanding what a domain and how to find it, uh, we have a whole playlist of just domain and range questions, which is on our main page on the channel. So you could always go back there and do those questions. This one will kind of be like a faster version because we have that playlist for you guys. Okay, so with domain, the only things that you basically have to know is you need to look out for exclusions. So AKA numbers that do not satisfy this function. Numbers that if you plug in for X's, the function would be undefined. It would not exist. There's usually two uh, exclusions that you really have to worry about. Either square roots, so a number under a square root, there's exclusions or numbers that are not included when you do a uh, square root. And then fractions, where you have your X value in the denominator. So just quickly, just know that for square roots, your x can only be greater than or equal to zero. You can have no negative values in for under a square root. So this x value cannot be a negative one or a negative two, but it could be anything from zero up until infinity. For denominators, where you have an x value in your denominator, just know that the x cannot be equal to zero. So there's a little discrepancy between both of these. So you can have negatives, you can have positives, but you just cannot have zero. So just make sure that you memorize these two exclusions, guys. We're gonna be using this information to find out what the domain is. Okay, so the first thing that I see here is for this part, for the p of x function, I have a denominator here, right? This was a denominator of this whole function. So let's see what values uh, we can't have for this. Well, this is a double whammy. It's a square root and it's a denominator, right? So I got to kind of combine these two exclusions together. So the square root tells me that my x can be greater than or equal to zero, right? That's what we stated before. But however, since it's in a denominator, and I'm just going to put over here, this is a square root plus a denominator, double whammy. But because it's in the denominator, remember, you get rid of the zero option. X cannot be equal to zero. So instead of it being X is greater than or equal to zero, I'm going to strip that equal sign away. Oh gosh. Or I'll just put X has to be greater than zero. So, AKA, this value could be anything from, you know, point one and on, or if you were doing whole numbers, one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. It just cannot be zero, and it cannot be anything less than zero, any negative values. Okay, so that's the first part. Now, I have another denominator. Here's the bigger de denominator separating the two functions, and this is the second piece of the puzzle. What do you think, guys? If this is in the denominator, 
this, what are the rules? This just cannot be equal to zero. So let's check it out. There's two things that you could do here. You could either simplify this if you know your uh, factoring for perfect squares, or you can just solve for x. I'm just going to solve for x, so I'll just say x squared minus 4. Let's see. If x cannot be equal to 0, I'm just going to set it equal to 0 to see where the cutoff is. Um, so if I plug on 4 to the opposite side, you get x squared equals 4. If I take the square root, I get two options. My x value could be either a positive 2 or it can be a negative 2. So here are my three options for the whole function now. I have, for the first part, x can be greater than 0, x equal to 2, and x being um, a negative 2. Which one does not apply? Hmm. If this one says it can be anything over 0, but then I have x equals negative 2, this is not going to work. So sometimes you kind of have to, you know, sit back and look and see, is there anything that's, you know, not making sense here? So I'm going to combine these two. So it looks like I go from 0, that's the lowest number here, and I'm going all the way to 2, right? So, excluding or including these numbers? Well, we already found out that we couldn't include it, so it has to be an exclusion value. And for domain, that's a parenthesis. And over here, remember, these were saying that it could not be, because that would make it equal to zero. So I'm also going to exclude this. But then, all other positive numbers are cool. So I'm going to continue on, a u, exclude 2, and I can go all the way to positive infinity. Exclude that as well, parenthesis, because infinity is just a theoretical value. But this whole thing, I'm just going to pull this over here, is the answer for your domain and interval notation for the first part. Okay, let's now move on to b. B is a composite function. We did tons of questions for composite functions. If you need more help, go see those videos. Um, so this one is going to be kind of a quick inversion because we got to get down to the domain. So if I have P of M of X, I have an inner function here, M of X, and I'm meshing it with the P of X function. That's the outer function. So the inner function, and the rules are down here, guys. With composite functions, you always work from inner to outer, meaning the most inner parenthesis to the most outer parenthesis. And you plug in the input for the inner function and solve. So the inner function here was just m of x. The m of x is x squared minus 4. Then you use that new answer, the input, that you just solved for and plug it in into the outer function. The outer function was the p in this case. So step number two, p of this answer, whoop, x squared minus four. And that equals, now the p function was this, which means that any time that you see an x, now you're going to plug in this. So it would be 1 over the square root of, well, what's x now? It's this. So x squared minus 4. Don't have to simplify. That's not what the question was asking. We have our function here. Now we just got to find out the domain. Remember our exclusions, guys. We got a double whammy again. We have a square root and we have a denominator. So just remember, square roots are allowed to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, denominators can be any number, just not zero. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to see what value of x will get me to zero because I know that then that answer cannot be it, right? Because remember, the whole thing cannot be equal to zero.
because it's a denominator. So if I just square this and square this, that's the inverse of a square root, I get x squared minus 4 equals 0. And then plug on 4 over. So you get x squared equals 4. Break it down. We have a x being equal to a positive 2 and an x being equal to a negative 2. Okay. Now, we have to think. Both of these will do, or maybe just one will do. Let's see. The 2 means that you cannot be equal to the plus 2, right? Because then that would be equal to 0. The negative 2 also doesn't work because it would also get you a 0 in the denominator. But now, um, I think we are set because you now just basically have to figure out if any numbers in between these work. So let's just say that I put in a negative 1. Well, let's see, look, negative 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 4 is a negative value. Is that going to work for our square root? No, because remember, we cannot have any negatives in our denominator. So it looks like this 1, x equals negative 2, is basically not going to work here because anything up to 2 will get me a negative value here. So I have to start at 2. So here's my domain. Start at 2, but remember we have to exclude it, so that's a parenthesis. And looks like any other positive number will be okay because our square root will be positive. So I can go all the way up until infinity. I have to exclude that. So this will be the answer to the domain of B. Now, last but not least, let's do C up here. It's just another composite function, but just the opposite way. So now P of X is the inner and M of X or M, you're plugging it in. That's the outer function. So for one P of X, is what they said. It was 1 over the square root of x. Now I use this value to plug in for the outer function, which was m. So now for all the x values, I'm just going to plug in 1 over the square root of x. And there was only 1 here, right? So um, I'm going to say 1 over the square root of x squared minus 4. Okay, now let's see. Hmm, I'm running out of room here. Um, <laughs> I, think we, I think we could crunch it in, though, guys. Okay, so let's see here. Um, what did I want to do? Oh, yes, okay. So we can basically look at it from here. What's going on? Uh-oh, I got a double whammy again. I got a square root x, and the whole thing is in the denominator. Square roots, x has to be greater than or equal to 0. However, the denominator says that it can't be 0. So from the square root, the x can be greater than or equal to 0. However, from the denominator's point of view, I have to strip away that equal then. Because we don't want this denominator being equal to 0. So I know that any number I can plug in for this function, it just got to be greater than 0. So where's the cutoff? 0, right? So I'm just going to put it up here. 0 start. I have to include exclude it. So that's a parenthesis. But I can go all the way up to positive infinity. Exclude that because it's a theoretical concept. And that's it. So this one was pretty easy. All right, guys. Three parts down. This one is a big check. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. If you uh, want to subscribe to the channel and help us out, please hit the subscribe channel. Uh, we thank you so much for that. Keep studying hard. You guys got this. All right. With practice, you guys will be much better in math. I can promise you. And I'll be here every step of the way for you guys. So let's get into the next lesson. All right. See you in five seconds. Bye.